Hi everyone. You know, I don't usually do teardowns that much, but uh, I had a need for this case, so and this uh, it's an APC Smart USP uh, Model 750 um, USB power supply that had quit in service, so I decided I would uh, tear it apart and use the chassis for another project. So in the meantime, I thought I would go ahead and uh, just do a quick teardown video on it, just to see, you know, what's in it, in case anybody's interested in seeing something like this. So uh, let's crack it open and see what's in here. If you notice, it's got uh, six outlets on it. Let me put a little light on there. And... Uh, the USB port over here. It's a nine pin data connector. There's a cover here that comes out that looks like a module plugs in there. There's nothing in it. I'll turn it around. You can see a nice little uh, data connector in here. a front panel and I know when you try to turn it on it gives a fault code even with the batteries unplugged so uh, I don't like I said I don't have no need for even uh, using anything of this size so <laughs> I figure we tear it apart this case ought to come handy for a couple of projects I got in mind I'm going to go ahead and zip the screws out of it and let's see what's in this thing Okay, all the screws is out. We'll lift the cover. I really like this. This is very heavy gauge. Um, good and solid. Ain't no much flexibility in it. And there we are. See here we got a right good healthy uh, transformer there. I'm not sure, but you know, I'm pretty much thinking it's probably uh, 24 volt. Little uh, clip on filter on the leaves right there. That might come in handy for something. Got our main circuit board. big aluminum or aluminium depends on where you are plates here with uh, transistors probably kind of regulation going on here has a USB board here on the back uh, AC output sockets couple of MOVs on them but I think I see why this thing failed zoom out there where you can see there's two batteries over here and I don't know if you can see this on the camera zoom back in on it you can see just how distorted these batteries are and swollen They really, uh, they died a terrible life. So, big old 90 amp fuse on them. I think that's what that is. Pretty sure it is. It's got, no, excuse me, 60. Yeah, so it's like a 60 amp fuse. Nice. Pull these batteries out. To get these batteries out, you remove uh, four screws on the front of this tray, and this tray pulls right out. I was able to get the first one out. 
but I can't seem to go any further where the battery is so swollen it will not clear in between the bottom of the tray and this lip here so I'm going to have to play with this and see if I can uh, force these out of them without cracking them that might make a mess yeah these things are really swollen bad you can see right there get some light down on it the batteries are the ends are swollen up so bad that they've almost looked like they've joined together and they don't seem to want to move so it looks like I'm going to have to use a little force try not to damage the uh, chassis and then get these things apart well to get this tray out I had to come in here and drill out two rivets there in the framework and uh, that way I was able to lift this top piece and bend it up a little bit and was able to get the batteries past that but uh, <laughs> those are the batteries and you can see they have completely fused themselves together now, I don't want to break these apart here in the shop because I don't want nothing running out of them. Plus they were taped down with double sided tape to the bottom of the tray. So that made them a little interesting to get out. I had to break out the heavy artillery to pry them out of there. But yeah, these batteries have seen uh, better days. One of them is a, like maybe a replacement battery, maybe a long. And the other one's a APC battery. But, uh, yeah. They're definitely in bad shape. See if we can uh, pop this front panel off. piece of flat flex soldered on both sides does not unplug not really exciting there a few leads a couple of small FC's and some uh, a few passive components on it so as I'm pulling this apart I notice this uh, one wire running there is going into the battery compartment and uh, I was thinking you know what it was won't connect it on the other side and it's probably some kind of sensor. See the other end of it. Right down here to the circuit board. Yes, it's two wire. It's probably some kind of heat sensor. Maybe shut it down in case the battery was to get hot. Alright. Piece of flat flex coming from the back of this module right here. Goes over here to the circuit board. Look like it's plugged in. Yeah, it'll come in handy. I think it's plugged into the back of this module too, so you know doing pick programming projects, cables like this always come in handy. Alright, now there's the main board. Finally well, got that thing out. Not too hard. Here we got a LM317. Probably a driver chip for this uh, 
data port, a few relays, 20 microfarad, 150 volt capacitor, a couple of big inductors, a few more relays on there. Some micro caps, dip caps. A big capacitor here. It's got three pins on the bottom of it. Was looking at it while ago. It's got two grounds. One center. So there's a MOSFET here in the uh, center, and it looks like. Uh, that can be four more added on it. I say this is the model 450 and it's 700, no 450 watt. And then it goes right on up to, I think it was a uh, thousand watt. So I guess they would add more uh, MOSFETs in there for that. There's our USB board. Another nice uh, connector. These work real good on back of uh, ham radios to plug in to your power supply. Might be saving that just for that deal. Little buzzer on board. Not nothing very exciting to me here. Might be a few salvageable parts off of it. These heat sinks might come in handy for something. So we got us a nice uh, heavy duty 24 volt power transformer. Um, we probably can come up something good for that. I think it's tap for different voltages and uh, different outputs. That might come in handy for building a uh, power supply. But then the main thing I'm interested in is the chassis. I left the uh, power cord in it. I haven't took that out yet. But one of the potentials I see in this chassis is to uh, use it for one of my repeater projects. Um, what I'm thinking probably can house the receiver over here in this box. The transmitter here in this side it's enough room to put the transmitter and a small amplifier maybe something like this Volcom 100 watt amplifier will probably fit in there may be enough room in here to put some type of controller or uh, power supply haven't made my mind up on that yet but uh, yeah, good potentials in a chassis like this. This ought to come in handy for a repeater project. And don't have to uh, do much modifications. Even have a uh, slide out tray for the receiver to work on. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> One thing I did like about this chassis is that the width of it is 17 inches. So that could be made just right to put a front panel on it or some uh, strips of uh, angle on the front and it would fit right into an 18 inch rack. So, a little bit of thoughts on that. I think it's an excellent chassis. It's even got a uh, place to have a fan put in the back. So if I was to build a power supply here, to keep it cool. Lots of decisions. Would probably be even enough room in this chest to put the receiver and controller here. So I don't think the GE um, parts would fit in it, but definitely something like the Hamtronics boards would fit right in here with no problem.
Well, as you can see, I'm drinking up a lot of coffee here lately. <laughs> I need to uh, go out and find two more of these. And uh, these will actually be turned upside down. And what I'm planning on doing is showing you how to build a UHF duplexer out of four coffee cans. Now, at the bottom, you know, it's plastic. So this will be lined with several layers of aluminum foil and then pop back on, turn upside down. Main capacitor shaft will be right through the middle. Then your BNC connector. Then we'll put a notch tuning here on the side. So I was planning on getting to this today, but I've uh, been pretty busy here in the shop, so been a lot going on here lately. Um, you know, I had a trip to uh, Kentucky week before last, and then trying to catch up on work-related stuff and stuff here in the shop all week. So not as much done as I wanted to get done this week. But anyway, I just uh, wanted to uh, tear this down so that I'd just let y'all see part of the tear down and what my thoughts were on using this chassis was going to be for. And then we're going to get into uh, tuning up, or building and tuning up a uh, UHF duplexer. Our friend Dino sent us some uh, information in the mail on... Um, building homemade duplexes for two meters and I have actually seen this uh, article before Dino but it's been many many years ago I don't remember which QST it was in but I do remember this I think I had borrowed a QST for somebody then finally gave it back to them and uh, for the UHF we won't be using uh, this type of cavity design we'll do something a little bit different but one thing I did like about um, what Dino sent was uh, about plating, you know, the uh, inside of the duplexes. So all this information here will be used on our um, VHF duplexer project when we get to it. Um, the UHF is going to be completely different. And you're saying, you know, how can you build a UHF duplexer in... Uh, coffee cans well you can but you got to remember is that uh, duplexers are temperature sensitive so if you build a duplexer in coffee cans and you tune it at 70 degrees Fahrenheit then it's gonna to have to stay at 70 degrees Fahrenheit or your tuning will be different in any other temperature so you have to use these in a controlled uh, environment there will be four cans but we'll go through it and we'll explain it how it works and everything when we do that. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Uh, like I said, been very busy this week. Ain't had time to do a whole lot. Just going to try to get some stuff done today. But uh, the workload in here changed around a bit. So I just thought I'd do a little quick tear down on this. And look at this great super chassis here we got. Anyway, catch you next time. If you enjoy it, as always, give it a thumbs up. And we'll see you later.